Well, welcome to another three point edit tutorial and this time I'm going to be looking at doing a fast chroma keyer in the VSE. Now this isn't that straightforward. Unfortunately, it's not a one click effect solution, but it is it does render fairly quickly. So if we go over here away from the, th the 3D view and the layout to video editing, you may not have video editing as a option on these tabs. You may have to click over here and go down to video editing as a tab and choose video editing. So we'll click on the tab and I've already added a clip with a bit of green screen background, it's quite clean. Now the audio is irrelevant, but you'll notice up here in the corner, it's playing at 25 frames per second, which is the speed of the video as it was recorded. This will change as we add effects. Now I would ideally like to key out the green, that is subtract the green and keep the person in the middle. But I would also like the option of resizing my talent so that I can squeeze him down and move him around the frame. Now to do that, I'll have to add a transform effect to this clip. So we can select the clip by clicking on it. Let's add a strip or press shift A. We need to go down to effect strip and add transform. Now on top is applied the transform effect. Nothing seems to happen. I hit play. We're still 20 frames per second. It's not too bad. But what's happening now is that our video is having its size changed, even if it's only 100%, but we can resize it and we can rotate it like this. And we can move it left and right, up and down, and we can distort it if we want to. Now you'll notice that we have excess background here and there's nothing showing underneath. Right, so now we've taken care of moving our talent around on the screen. We need to add another effect. So I'm going to make sure the transform strip is selected. Then I'm going to add another effect strip. I'm going to add a, a Gaussian blur. While that's selected, I'm going to press the G key and the Y key and drag it straight down underneath. So it disappears underneath the original source video but this is where I'm going to build a key. That is, I'm going to make the image black and white where white is the green. So I'm going to change the display or the preview window here so that we only see this bottom strip. So if we look over here, it's on track two. So we need to go up to channel two. Now I'm looking at this clip, hit play get 16 frames per second. What I need to do is add a modifier. So over here on our properties panel for the strip, I'm going to add a hue correct modifier. And this is the hue correct window. Now we can see the green up here in our saturation, but we want to change the value or brightness. So what I'll do is grab that node or vertex and push it right up high and I'll grab this one and pull it down. So what I'm saying here is everything that is green becomes very, very white or maximum brightness. And then we're going to pull down every other color so that we don't want to see that. And you'll notice in the preview window up here that everything else has become black and the green has become white or very close to it. I can add another node and I can fill up that green space to improve the key or the parts that we want to remove. That is the green. Now I'll go over to saturation, S for saturation, and I'm going to make the image black and white. So we'll pull everything down. In fact, what I'll do is select all of these other nodes with the shift key selected. Like this. And press the X to delete them and then pull that down. And you'll see this has all become black and white. Now, this doesn't help us make the element see-through. We're still, what are we getting now? About between 10 and 19 frames per second. This doesn't make anything see-through. So you can see the checkerboard is see-through, but this element is not see-through. So if we type back in here in our channel and our view settings, zero, that means the VSE will look at all tracks from the top down. Now I've already got a background strip here, so if I zoom out, there it is. I'm going to select that 
press G and drag it on top. That seems a bit counterintuitive, doesn't it? To put our background on top. But what I'm going to do is cut a hole in this image from using this key channel we had down here and it will show through our transform clip. So let's do that now. I'm going to add a modifier and this one is a mask modifier. I've selected strip and I'll tell it to give me the Gaussian blur strip. So here we go, Gaussian blur, there it is. So there is the hole that our Gaussian blur strip cut and it's showing us the background image and our person, but unfortunately it has all of this space around it. Now, how do we fill that in? Well, we simply have to make a copy of our background. So I'm going to press G and drag it straight up. And I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate that and pull it straight down. So it was red because it was on top of the other clip and it can't live in the same place. So we'll pop that underneath. Now we need to go over here and get rid of its copy of the mask. Don't need that. But it made everything go away. So let's pop over to the strip property and we'll say it needs to be an alpha under. So now this clip is underneath this clip. We hit play and you can see we're getting about five to 10 frames per second. We can change the performance by altering the resolution here. If I drag down the percentage, it should speed up and improve our rendering resolution speed. So there we go, we're back up to 15 frames or so at around 40% resolution. So there you go. Now the, if we zoom in, you can see the quality is not great, but if we wind that back up on a still frame to 100%, we get to see what the quality of our key is. Now it's not perfect quality, but it's certainly as good as some of the keys that I've seen on Zoom calls. Now if we go back to our modifiers on the Gaussian blur, press the value button, we could probably change that. In fact, if we assess that track by typing in track channel two again, we can see the edge here and we can try and improve that edge by modifying where our slope is for our brightness. And if I pull that slope across, you can see it makes the edge a bit finer. We want to eliminate the green. We'll go back to channel zero to assess the entire image. And now it's quite, not quite so noisy. If we want to improve that edge a little bit more, because it looks a little bit sharp, what we could do is go back up to the strip. Remember, this is a Gaussian blur effect. I can select both of these by clicking and dragging over them and then sliding my cursor across to the right and it's softening up that edge. Now you may not see anything happen until I let go and change frame to the next frame. So typically the VSE requires a refresh all of the time. Every time you do something, it doesn't refresh when you change a, a value or a slider, you actually have to reassess the frame. So you can refresh the frame or step through to the next frame or do everything while you're in play mode. So I can do that while it's playing, it's always refreshing. And I can click and drag these values back. And you can see that that blur becomes significantly smaller as I get further and further back. Something like four or five. Now the only problem with this effect is that I can't actually modify the spill. This green edge here is called green spill. I can't really uh, um, attenuate that. This is really just a very fast um, care that you can uh, slap onto videos in real time. I see there's a little bit of green spill down here as well. Just need to maximize our white value. If it's a little bit gray, you tend to see more green as you push the white point to maximum. It gets rid of all that green spill from the green screen. And then we can just simply use the transform effect to move the subject around as we like. Now it's not as reassessing the frame, so I need to step forward one frame by using frame advance with the arrow key, or I could use this button down here to frame advance. Oops. There you go, that's a quick VSE chroma key. Uh, it's a little bit involved, I guess, but hopefully with the, the transform 
um, effect, rotation and scale will all get built into the master strip at some point in the future. But the key takeaway is that we use the modifiers to choose the colors that we want to, ma uh, to remove. So we make anything green peak white and everything else black. Then we remove the color using the saturation and then we apply that to our top strip our background strip to cut a hole in it. You can see that there if I ISO that clip you can see it has a hole cut in it and then we place the background in there which is just that 100% background. There's our transform clip that's our original and this is our blurred version which is the keyed background.